Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. You know how I'm always saying that communication is a lubrication, but what if you don't quite know how to go about having those important sex talks? In this show, I'm teaching you how to approach your partner with what you want in bed, the exact scripts that you need to go through to get what you want. Threesomes, anal sex, sex toys, we're covering it all. Thanks for listening. And thanks, everyone, for supporting my sponsors. Okay, it's the holidays, and there is no better time to get a massage and relax. And a great way to do it is with a massage candle. I made these beautiful candles with my partner, Tony. They are amazing candles that are beautiful. You could just, you know, leave them out on your table, but they have a little secret trick to them. You light them and they, it pulls into the most amazing, warm, luxurious massage oil. So you blow it out. It's not like hot or waxy or sticky or messy. And you can pour it on your partner and give him an amazing massage. And it's a perfect gift. It's a perfect thing to have around the house. And everyone's like, what, what? Massage candle? Again, they're beautiful and you can just leave them in your home or give your partner a massage. A listener emailed me and said to me, my girlfriend was skeptical at first, but agreed to try the warm oil on me first and gave me a back rub. Then I reciprocated and we had amazing sex. She could not stop talking about how good the candle smells and how great the massage oil feels. I am convinced that the scent and the candle helped us through some of the barriers to sex that we have faced lately. You know me. I created these candles so you could have the best sex of your life. And everyone, the, the kind of things you got to try and feel them and touch them. And then you'll be like, oh my God, Emily, thank you so much. I totally get it. So you got to get them. And for a limited time right now, you can go to my website and it's buy one, get one free. It is um, use code massage until December 30th. And yeah, you get one candle free. So check it out at emilyandtony.com. Thanks everyone for listening. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com where you can check out all of our podcasts, sign up for my mailing list. Oh, and this month we've got so many great gift guides. If you're like, what do I get my partner? What's a good thing? I've got fun things for you. No, they're not all crazy sex toys, but they're just some things I think you should add into the mix to spice up your relationship. You can get her the purse she wants or the shoes or, you know, he might want a new iPhone, but, you know, why not always throw something in that would make your sex life a little bit better? That's what we're about. And also sign up for my mailing list because I send you emails that are quite entertaining and will also improve your sex life. And as always, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Sex with Emily. We have a bunch of contests coming up and really fun things, giveaways, and I just think you're going to like it. So check it out. I'm here with Menace today. Hello, Emily. How are you doing? I am so good. I'm excited to be here with you. And thank you for all the listeners. They've been hitting me up a lot lately on social media 
Twitter, and uh, I actually see them around Los Angeles. I wish I could see them across uh, the country and other places around the world that people download the show. But uh, thank you for the support of the what show. What are they saying to you? They said that they, they love it. They miss it, you when you're not here. Yeah, that's crazy. But, you know, I'm just... You've been doing this for... Yeah, but I'm just an ass, you know? I don't really add anything to the show. No, you but sometimes do. No, you I, add a lot. I love, like, digging into your life. <laughs> I think that's what they like, because I'm probably the only one that asks you about your own life. It's and, true. I know. wonder if that... You know what, Menace, you brought up a good point. I'm wondering from the listeners, because we actually were going to put out a poll, so check our website. Mm-hmm. It's like 10 questions. And I want to know, we've been doing this for nine years, mm-hmm. and I just want to know from the listeners, like, what what, what do you love about the show? What, what would you like to hear more of? Um, what have you learned? What topics do you want us to cover? All that stuff. Yeah, How can we improve crazy it? stuff. You know? I'd love it. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. Um, I love it. They're hitting you up. And it's Menace across the board. Yeah, just Menace, M-E-N-A-C-E on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram yeah. is always my favorite. I know. You're a good years. Instagrammer. You're Thank always you. in goddamn Disney World. Disneyland. Disneyland. Sorry. Disneyland. I grew up, in, where I grew up, it was all Disney World because yeah, we went know. to Florida. So it's the holidays. What the hell is going on with Oh, your my life? God. Things are. Anything? Things, yeah, things are good. I mean, we just moved offices to an amazing new space mm-hmm. across the street. So we've been moving a lot. And I'm around for the holidays. I'm going to go to Florida with my family. See nice. my brother. We're going to go to South Beach and party on uh, New Year's Eve. Lucky. Do you want to come? I know you love my brother. I am going to continue with my tradition of being in Vegas for New Year's. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to see Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett. No way. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. That'll be amazing on New Year's Eve. On New Year's Eve, yeah. That's so fun. At the Cosmopolitan. So I love that. Are you going fun. with a group or just your girl? Just me, my lady. You and she... the lady. Things are going strong? Yeah, everything's going uh, great. All this stuff. <laughs> how do you, how do you, the one person that has the most perfect relationship in the world? Are you I just don't share know. with me? No, I, I honestly, we just, you know, we know what we want and we have fun all the time That's with each so other. Important. And I don't know. It was funny because we went uh, just recently to a, a Justin Timberlake concert, right? She loves Justin Timberlake. JT. And uh, we were in the VIP because we we're lucky enough to get in there. And um, there was this couple just going at it, just fighting and arguing. And uh, and the the girl like turns around, and the guy had a beer in his hand. And I, I was watching the guy, and the guy like sips his beer, and he goes, oh, "Man, f this bitch," and just keeps on drinking. Oh my and God. then goes back and starts arguing with her again, right? And I turn to my girlfriend, and I go. How come we never fight like that <laughs> with that passion? And she goes, because I know if I tried to argue with you like that, that you would leave me here. <laughs> <laughs> you and would. I You'd go, be like, I'm out. I go, you know what? You're right. Because I want to be putting up with that crap. No, but who know? fights like that? They must have been drunk, young couple or something. Uh, no, they look like they were uh, mid thirties or something. Some like people that. get off on that. There's couples who totally get off they on need the fighting the drama. I know. And I, I don't I, think it's healthy. I've definitely seen that. And I hate to put it on my female friends, but I've definitely seen that with my female friends where they do love the drama because it, it kind of gives them meaning to have discussions with their friends and, you know, like well, I don't talk think, crap about their boyfriend and stuff like that. I don't think but no, you notice that all the time because they talk a bunch of ish on how crappy their boyfriend is, but yet they never leave them. They're always, they stick We around, talk about this a lot, know? how I can give people advice or my friends till they're blue in the face and all they don't long. leave the guy. But same with, same with men too. But there are some couples who just get off on the adrenaline. That's sort of like how their relationship got formed was they fight, they make up, make up sex, they fight. It's the adrenaline, but I don't, yeah. it's not really the healthiest way to progress in a relationship. So if you're in one of those relationships and you are getting off on that, you know, you're like, we have to fight because a lot of, a lot of times that's when they really see their partner, men or women, they, that's when they really feel like they connected to their partner, but it's yeah. like negative reinforcement rather than positive. So it's like, oh, you really do you care, care about me. And we're yeah, fighting, yeah. but it's not really, there's so many other ways to connect it's with your partner. So terrible. if you're having the same arguments over and over again, it might be something that you want to look at. Yeah. And a lot of times when they're drinking, it comes out. It's just mm, not attractive. Yeah, I think I, I just kind of like... I put that thing. It's just like I just don't argue. There, I don't. See I'm not any, a fighter either. I don't see any point in it. You know, it's a waste of time. Right. You should either learn to talk. we discuss right now what the problem is or get the f out of my face. Right. You I know? mean, so many because I'm not going to play any games. Exactly. With you, you know. No. What well, sounds like you found the right person. Yeah. I um. I, it's funny that you say that because today's show is actually. You know, I'm always saying communication is a lubrication. Talk to your partner about what you want in bed. And what's been occurring to me lately is I like you know that's not so. E- it's it's really one of the hardest things 
for couples to do is to actually bring up those difficult things, even if it's about sex or if it's just about, you know, I hate when you leave your dirty socks around. They just don't know how to start that conversation. So I thought today's show, I have Madison here, who's my assistant producer, and you, Menace, who can, we're going to do some scripts that are going to walk through some of those topics that you might be like, yeah, I mean, I know I want to have a threesome, but how do I bring it up? You know, so I'm going to tell you exactly what you have to say for some of those sticky sex situations and relationship scenarios that you don't quite know how to start the conversation or how to get it going and get what you want. Not at this moment, though. First thing I have to tell you is, so what's up with me is, Mm -hmm. um, I'm still single. Yeah. But I have actively, actively, actually, (laughs) actively Mm -hmm. been dating. I I reignited my Tinder account. Oh, really? I'm sure that's going Just to kind of check it out. No, I haven't gone on any dates yet, but it was really funny. Listen to this effed up Mm -hmm. thing. So I'm on Tinder. And yeah. I happened to match up with a guy that I was dating for a while last year. Uh-huh. He matched. We, like, matched. And so yeah. I liked Like, we're still friends. Mm-hmm. So I liked him or whatever. And then it said, you are a match. So I went to see his profile. Like, you know, you have 500 words to say mm-hmm. what you want to say. He took my exact copy and copied what I said on my profile uh-huh. and used it. Because he had already matched with me, seen my profile. Yeah, yeah, ma- yeah. And I was like, dude. Wait. He used your profile because, bio on yeah. his bio, well, all or I did said, he use your bio to answer everything? He used my bio on his because I said okay. now everyone's. He's like, well, I figured you were an expert, so I just used what you used. Oh, nice. So I say, okay, so on Tinder, if you've been on Tinder, it's the popular app where you swipe left, right. You get people's pictures basically, and you choose who you like or not, mm-hmm. and then if you like them and they like you, you get a match. So I liked him just to see his profile, yeah. and we matched because he had liked me. And my Tinder profile says, they give you 500 words. I said, in 500 words or less, I couldn't even begin to describe what I'm all about. That's just what I wrote. His says, 500 words isn't nearly enough to say what... He copied me. What? So I freaking called him on it, and I said, what the hell? He goes, well, you're the expert. I mean... How messed up is that? He's like, I'm like, well, is it working for you? Like, he's like, yeah, it's great. I'm getting all these matches. What? That's messed up. Don't don't plagiarize my Tinder profile. I caught him red-handed. That's messed up. I know. See, I'm not even on on Tinder, but I gotta know more about it. So I think I should be like Spider-Man. Do you want to see all Tinder the guys I've matched with? Yes, please. There's some weird dudes too apart. that like that you some... matched. I've then met how, like 500. You, then why well, are you calling them weird dudes? If because you're the what one happens is after we like match, then they send me a message. Isn't that weird? Dick, can they send you photos? Do they send you dick pics? No, but one guy's like, hello. Like for a month, he's been like, yeah. hi, we matched. Hello, hello. Are yeah. you there? Anyone there? Damn, that guy's thirsty. <laughs> you know okay, this thirsty? guy just said, oh my God, look at this one. Okay, this one. He just messaged yeah. me again. Yeah. Read that. His name is John. All right. That's all his messages to me. After. So wow. after you match with someone, you can communicate. Via the app, if you yeah. don't match. And I never responded to him. And I don't, Madison, what are you writing to what? him? I said, hey, this is Emily's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write him right You're now. You're writing him now? He's yeah. been messaging me. Can you just read Menace? Don't yeah, do that because he's been thing. pestering me for six weeks. Don't worry. He's not going to pester you anymore. I'm not going to tell him to F off or anything. What are you saying? Don't take over. I did not give you my phone so you can be in charge of what? my dating. Okay. Just read what he says. All right. Read what I just wrote. Read what he says. and then Okay, read. Madison, you and chime in. Madison. Go, go first. Read everything that okay. I... That so, he wrote, and then read what I wrote. First, at the end. on what date? From like, John, starting November nineteenth. Okay, you yeah. are so sexy! Sexy! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Then, like a week later, happy Saturday. Then a sad face. Then talk to me. Multiple E's. Desperation is growing. Question mark. And de- on December second, another winky sad face. Is that a crying face? I don't even know <laughs> yeah. what that means. On December third, December fourth. Killing me, all caps. Yeah. December 10th, a week later, do you ever talk to anyone? And then wow. Menace's response today, hey, this is Emily's boyfriend. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and Don't send it. And that will be the end of that. Did oh, no, it's it? already been sent. <laughs> oh, my God, Menace. What? That, okay. That just happened. That's Why? a joke. No, don't say it's a joke. You don't want to talk to that guy. Don't send it. That's a joke. Well, I do. No, I'm like let, a, let, me, let me say. Because then I sound like a bitch. That's what a joke. Hell? Sorry. I mean, more soon. Okay, see, listen. Now, now this, this guy's material. gonna keep on messing. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, and I don't mean that I'm leading guys on. There's just some guys that you. First of all, I am super busy, right. but I'm trying to incorporate dating into my life, and so. There are a few guys I've been chatting with, but there's this one guy that I matched with that I thought was really cute. Uh-huh. And then we ta- we ta- exchange yeah. numbers. That's the next level of Tinder. Once you get <clears throat> connected with someone, you can say, oh, we like chatting. 
And honestly, I don't know why I didn't answer this. I just, I think once I looked at it, I was like, uh, because sometimes you just really examine it once you match. Yeah. But the other guy I matched with, I thought he was cute. We went back and forth and then he's, then we exchanged phone numbers Uh because then you take it the next level is texting. And then he just keeps sending me pictures of himself, not Uh dick pics, but just like, and he's handsome. Kind of. Yeah. Oh God. And I'm like, dude, let's have some words. Yeah. Let's have some words. Like, I, that is, is weird. Chi- yeah, That's selfies. a chick thing. So that, like, turned me off, too. And <laughs> so I'm done. Turn you off. But I do have a lot of matches on there. So, you know, that's that's what I've been doing. And, I, but, you know, I've been seeing some people here and there. Do you um, know the term thirsty? I just used it. I want you to learn it. Tell me. Thirsty is the guy that kept on messaging you. Like, you're, oh, you're so thirsty that you're too eager to talk to this talk to somebody isn't that like a huge turnoff yeah it is so don't be thirsty only message once i can't <laughs> believe men has just said this is her boyfriend because then i'm a psycho chick who's on tinder with a boyfriend but that's cool he yeah, already thinks i'm crazy yeah and now you just message him like it was a well, joke and now bad. he's gonna message you again i'm just gonna end it now see after the you show you really want to talk to this guy that's no i why. don't I, why would you say that because i just didn't want yeah. you to, to be in charge of my messaging um but okay, anyway okay i promise i won't message again but i want to see the other guys which one don't ma- I don't trust you anymore. I swear to God, I won't. I promise. God, all my friends and relationships just uh, want to look at my Tinder. I want to because I don't know what it, how it works or looks like. Okay, so you go and you, all yeah, right. you all Let you do see. is you put in, and it's in every city now. I mean, you all put right. in, all you put in is if you were looking for men or women, the mm-hmm. age range you're looking for, and then geographically, like I want it to be three miles away, ten miles away. So that's it. All and right. then people just come up and you swipe and you swipe and you Get find it. who you like. And it's really interesting, you know. Okay, this so, guy's some weird, weird Bernie man guy. Okay, then I saw that. Is... And, and honestly, sometimes you press, you like them, and then you go into it once you match, and All you're right. like, oh, I'm not so sure. But people, you know what? Here's the thing about dating, and mm-hmm. we did, we talked about this a lot on the show, is that you know, online dating is a great option. You can always find someone online, but also you got to remember those real life dating skills out in the real world. Holidays are here. You might be going to holiday parties. If you see someone that you find attractive or interesting or just, just hi, how you doing? What brings you here tonight? Wait. Don't be ashamed to just say hi. You're both at a party. It's festive. This looks and like just start talking to people. This one guy right here, David, he looks like that douchey ex-car um, salesman guy that used to date in L.A. Doesn't he? Oh, no. Yeah, but that's a different guy. Um, I Like, why are you wearing a tie in your... In your photo. Like, that's so douchey. All right. Well, it's because you don't own a tie and only hoodies. I have a bunch of ties, but I don't wear them in, like, profile pics on, on like, social media. Okay, get off my Tinder. Give me the phone back. We've got a show to do. You're right, going to make guy, me anxious. Oh, oh, also, people, do you know, you know that on oh, Thursday nights you can actually watch our show? Watch and listen live, 8.30 to 9.30 Pacific Standard Time at sexwithemily.com. It's pretty awesome. Oh, my God. Menace is messaging people. I'm you can not. watch. And then afterwards, it's on our site. You can watch the whole video of the show if you ever want to see what happens in the world, which is uh, exciting. I'm trying right? to look for one guy that doesn't look like a douche on here. Dude, I'm this is my life. I know. Match. Well, I'm actually practicing. This guy is not 47. He's definitely like 60 something. Oh, dude. Okay, so <laughs> so the thing is, is that I actually am practicing what I preach because yeah. I know I'm telling you all to talk to people, and I realize that I don't really put myself out there a lot because I'm not out that much. But I am. You know, lately I'm trying to. You know, I'm going out more, and I am making it a point just to talk. Say hello, whether I find I'm attractive or not. Women, it's just a good skill. You walk in a party, hey, how you doing? What you know? Mm-hmm. Well, who do you know here? How'd you get here? And you just, it's not like there's not like a magical formula. There's not a pickup line, but you just start a conversation, and that's how you know if you match someone. So this is a great time to do it. I just clicked on this uh, message that says, "I respect a woman who's willing to show her soul like that." Like what the f is? Because my about? shoe is in the first picture. Oh, foot fresh guy. <laughs> Look at this guy trying to use his dog to get laid. And you actually talked to him. I'm not going to read what you wrote. But, <laughs> like, come on. That is so obvious. I know. Dogs and babies. Dog it's not good. To get, to get laid. Cats. Oh, my God. But a lot of people put kids in there to show that they have kids. Yeah. Madison, you haven't been on it because you have a boyfriend. Yeah, I started dating someone right before this whole Tinder thing blew up. So I've actually never mm-hmm. been on it. Although I do think it's fun to get on other people's Tinders. Like, just what you're saying. It's yeah. like I'm living vicariously through my single friends because I have no idea. People ask me questions about Tinder and I'm like, yeah, go You can it. go on mine anytime. Do you, do in fact, I should assign someone in the office to just start picking out cute guys for me. Cause do I'm you t- have a, like a daddy complex? Because there's a bunch of old guys on here. No, a I don't. A bunch of old balls. She likes them mature. <laughs> 
No, I don't have a date. There's young and old. Okay, There's stop looking mates. at my Tinder. All right. So, um, let's talk. Okay, so, let's talk. So the deal is... Uh, other than Tinder and all this stuff, uh, how about in the on- offline life? Because that was a big conversation that we had last time. We exactly. Here. That's Anything what I'm saying. In the offline life going on? You know, it's funny. I have met people... Um, I got asked out at... Like when I was walking down the street in my new office mm-hmm. on Hollywood Boulevard, which is kind of sketch, <laughs> but there was a cute guy and we just started talking and I told him what I did and he emailed me, but you know, maybe I'll go out with him. I've been, fi- I don't, I wasn't that attracted to him. All right. So as so far as dating goes. you're not that attracted to him. There's see, this other guy that your, I've been that's seeing. That's you get yourself in trouble. Because I know. you start dogging these guys and you're like, oh, I'm not really interested. You do that all the time. Why? Well, because I'm open. Because you know why the thing is? Men decide in three seconds or less if they want to sleep with someone. It doesn't mm-hmm. change. Women, guys can kind of grow on you. You meet someone and and this is terrible for guys like, oh, I might grow on her. And that doesn't happen all the time. But for women, it has a lot more to do with, you know, guys can become more attractive to us over time. They, you know, Our mm-hmm. brain is the largest sex organ. So you say yeah. something, you're interesting, you're intriguing, you're smart. Um, you know, I might find myself become more attracted to you. So I'm just more flexible. Let's say that. All right. But there was a guy that I was kind of seeing who is a we were friends so I've never done this I've never been usually I meet someone and either we hook up we don't or we date and we were friends for about a year and then we started to we slept together mm-hmm. which we weren't going to we talked about that we weren't going yeah, to right. and then we did and then he got really like kind of weird about it after and okay. he started it's just I just I'm like can we just go back to the friend part and just mm-hmm. forget that we slept together and then he was like but I still want to sleep with you and now it got weird and it's All sort right. of annoying because I'd rather just and I but I like them though, and I wish that we could, you know, I don't know that it would go anywhere, but I think it's interesting. Have you ever done that, been really good friends with someone, and then it mm-hmm. turns into a relationship? Into a relationship? Like yeah. long term? Well, yeah, or to someone you date? Uh, that I was friends with them, and no, I don't think it's like, re, like manufactured into a relationship. No, right. it hasn't. You just sleep with them. Yeah. Right. And then we're How about like you, friends again. Um, my current boyfriend, actually, we were very good friends, and he knew right away that he wanted to sleep with me. And for months and months, I was like, no, like, I have no interest mm-hmm. in it whatsoever. And then and what then happened? What was the We just started point? spending, like, a lot of time together one-on-one mm-hmm. doing the whole, like, buddy-buddy thing. And then it just mm-hmm. kind of, like, grew. And then, and then after one bottle of tequila, it was on. Uh, tequila, one. female Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I quoted you on Loveline the other night I saying did. that Dr. Drew laughed. It <laughs> is. For real, though. I know. The, the, the silver, not- the silver, keep it clear. Don't go brown because if you, if you drink the dark this. tequila, then they'll go crazy. You're the tequila expert. They'll kick in your car or something. I was in Mexico crazy. and I told you I was going to bring you some, but then I got so obsessed. I know that you are so particular about your tequila. And yeah. then if I got you the wrong one, you wouldn't drink okay. it. You don't but mind? Real quick. Let's go um, to the holiday season. Okay. And so you're going to go to Florida. I'm going to go to Florida. With a family. To South Beach. So you think you're just going to like hook up with I some rando guy or what? On New Year's Eve? You mean before yeah. Yeah. Who knows? You never know. I don't, you know, I got to be honest. I'm typically not, it's funny because I'm not, I I haven't had a lot of one night stands and random hookups. Mm -hmm. I know that you would think that would be different. I'm not saying I never have, but I've always been a little more, you know, conservative about it. But New Year's Eve, hey, let let my freak flag fly. Have you ever had like a really good New Year's Eve? I know we both come from San Francisco, which is not a great New Year's Eve town. No. Um, at all. That's no, why, that's why you go to Vegas every go year. Go to Vegas, yeah. I mean, have honestly, you had any, like, it's been a long time. Stuff? I, it's when I'm with my girlfriends that I uh, love and we're all just hanging out and go out together. Go, it's never with a guy. Cabin in the woods oh, and, last like, year was horrible too. I got in a fight with the guy I was dating and broke up with them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, New Year's I think is really kind of overrated. I think yeah. it's a fun night if you have something, you know, but I don't think you have to go all out and spend all this money going to a club and, you know, yeah. the, you, everything's overpriced. I mean, just yeah. I think the best thing to do is to just go out with some mm-hmm. friends, have a party, yeah. have people over, and I not mean, be driving around doing a bunch yeah. of things. I mean, I'm going to a show, but a nightclub is the absolute Ugh. worst place like, that you can yeah. be on New Year's Eve. What do they call it? Like a junior, what? like JV night, or like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's. Beginner's night or whatever. Yeah, what is yeah. it called? What yeah, do you say? Yeah, it's like, yeah. you know. No, Beginner's Jade University. Night. Yeah. No, but they think it's like, you know, like any holiday. I'm not yeah. going to go crazy. But the holiday, what about you? Are you going Christmas, holidays, family? No. Um, I'm going to go back to our hometown of San Francisco for um, a couple of days. And then I'm going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to go to Hawaii for a little while. Nice. And then I'm going to leave Hawaii and go to Vegas for New Year's. Okay. 
because I got to take a Sometime you got to take you got to take them all the time. And I take little mini vacations. I'll leave for a couple of days, but I don't actually leave for a week or anything like okay, that. Okay, well, I think you need that. You work really yeah. hard. He's the hardest working man, so show business. Okay. Thank you so much. When we come back, we are going to give you the scripts how to talk to your partner and how to get what you want in bed. But first, a word from our incredible, amazing sponsors. Okay. It's the holidays, and I'm going to tell you exactly what she wants. A high-quality, premium sex toy that's rechargeable, waterproof, powerful, and designed to hit her in all the right places. Plus, you can play with them together. And my favorite toy is Menace. Do you know what my favorite toy is? The Hitachi Magic Wand? No, besides that, the Mimi. The Mimi? Oh, the Juju Mimi? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all Jeju, J-E-J-O-U-E right. Mimi. Well, Hitachi, whatever. But the yeah. Mimi I've been talking about for years, it mm-hmm. is truly amazing. It is great for clitoral stimulation or the Fifi, which is a mm-hmm. dual stimulation vibrator for clitoris and G-spot. Um, they have a Mio. They have a penis ring. Mm-hmm. which is the coolest. Like, there's a lot of these rings out there that you just kind of toss them away. They're re- they're not even, like, rechargeable. They're, they're like, 8 bucks. This one is rechargeable, waterproof. And I'm telling you, if you think vibrations are just for her, guys, every guy that I've given a penis ring to or used it with are like, oh, my God, vibrations feel great on your shaft, on your balls. You have to try their Mio, M-I-O. And now um, they also just have a bunch of – their toys are – amazingly designed they're beautiful gifts and they are next level sensations this is why i love them because i can use one like the mimi which i'm obsessed with put it over your clitoris you hold it in your hand it's like a little skipping stone um they're beautifully packaged discreet you can leave them out no one even knows it's a sex toy they're like mini orgasm machines so check them out use code emily for 10 percent off your purchase at jeju.com that's j-e j-o-u-e dot com and uh, 10% off. Use code Emily. So that's you got to get your uh, girlfriend, even though you don't like sex toys, menace. I don't know if you do. Maybe you've changed and you haven't talked to me about it. You were supposed to give me uh, a, a toy because I want to bring it into work and show everybody is the attachment for the iPad. It was <laughs> oh, like the, we have that. Yeah. Oh, it's for the flashlight. Yeah, for the flashlight. So the flashlight, you know, it's like basically a, a pocket penis or something. Yeah, it's a, it's a masturbation right. sleeve. Yeah, and then, but they put an iPad attachment on it now, and you put the iPad on top, and I guess you watch videos. Right, and you can, it's like you're having sex with, you put, so yeah, it, the, mm. the, the attachment beneath it holds onto the um, the masturbation sleeve, and then you could be watching whatever you're watching, porn, yeah. you could be having phone sex with uh-huh. your, or Skype sex or whatever yeah. with your partner, and then you're like moving it up. It's pretty wow. freaking cool. Do you really, do you really want to bring it into your... Yeah, I'll show it to him. I'll do you want me to give it to you, gift it to you for Christmas? Would you, you like want it? want to gift it to me, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so... Well, this... Oh, and I need your uh, uh, ball uh, lotion. Oh, you need some Down Under Comfort? <laughs> yeah. Did you run out? Yeah. I, I ran out a long time ago. You never... We have to remember. Anything. Okay, Down Under Comfort, I talked about the massage candles also, but Down Under Comfort, why do you love it? Just tell them, so I'm not... Well, it kind of, it just... All right, so guys, we sweat, we're nasty, we're disgusting, you know, and women hate it. <laughs> and, you know, and if you're about to, like, hook up with a lady, you don't want to smell like ball sweat, no. all right? You want to smell good. And I swear to God, not because Emily's my friend, this Down Under Comfort stuff is amazing. It feels good on your skin, and it smells awesome, have... you know? Thank you, Menace. That's something that you need in your life. You do. And, how do you get it again? Emilyandtony.com. Use code Emily for 20% off. And Men's Health Magazine voted it the number one product you didn't know you needed. Yeah. Yeah, because it's one of these like miracle products. And women can use it too. Mm. Anywhere you sweat. Boobs, yeah. blower back. Okay. So thank you. I will bring you some. Right. I think I have one in my car when we oh, go out. Good. Okay. So scripts for better sex. So like I always talk about communication. Communication is a lubrication. But for some of us, applying these communication skills are not as simple as just lubing up and getting ready for sex. Because I've just been thinking about the show lately because, you know, we've been doing it for so long and the show. And I think, you know, it's just sometimes I just say, just talk to someone, you know, it, it's not that easy. So I thought, what if I really broke it down for you on how it goes? So Madison here is going to help me. And Madison, I'm sure, is going to chime in. I'm going to chime in. Do some scripts. I, I was going to do this with you, but I can't do it with a straight face without. I know you won't it apart even because you won't be helpful. Time. You'll just be. No, I'm kidding. I'll be mean. You'll and be mean. I know you don't like that, so I'm just going to. No, sit I back like when you're mean. But did you do anything else you wanted to ask me about my personal life? Because <laughs> your personal life, well, no, you're going on vacation and stuff like that, and uh, I just want to know if you're going to have a random hookup. In you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to make that my goal because I think that would be good <laughs> for me to have a random hookup that I can share with you all. But there's some good stuff percolating right yeah. now with men in my life, all so right, I'm going to have more information. Okay, so you know, I know you can read my 
blogs and you can listen to my show. But here's some, so here's some tips to help guide you through the big sex talk. So first of all, no matter what you want to talk about, maybe your partner ejaculates too quickly. He doesn't perform oral sex. She doesn't perform oral sex on you enough. You want to have a threesome. You want to bring your sex toy into the relationship and you just don't know how to talk about it because the reason why it's so hard to communicate with your partner is because a lot of times there's nothing to talk about at the beginning. Sex is amazing. You're having rock and sex. And then when it becomes a problem or an issue, you're like, I don't know how to bring it up because everything's been so great and you don't have the skills. So first, before you talk to your partner, think about what you really want to say. Do you want more sex? Do you want less sex? More foreplay? Different foreplay? What is your end goal? And then you can make sure that the conversation is constructive. Also, timing. It's so important. You do not want to start talking about your sex life in bed after something bad happens or after something weird happens. It's best to do it outside the bedroom, you know, when you're having breakfast the next morning in the living room. Um, You know, you don't want to just be like in the middle of sex, kill the moment and talk about it unless you're in pain. If he's hurting you or she's hurting you, you want to bring it up in the moment. Also, tone. Tone is a huge issue and point of contention between couples because a lot of times you're trying to say something really nice or pleasant or confront something, but the tone can be so off. So depending on whatever issue you're addressing and the nature of the relationship, your tone should match the nature of the talk. So is it a playful conversation? Is it like, hey, I want to try something new? Or is it more serious? So you have to be sensitive. Take your partner's feelings under consideration because if it's difficult for you to talk about, it's not easy to hear feedback. And so you want to, you know, again, it's not like we need to talk. Let's have a big conversation because the second you say that, someone's going to think, oh, no, something bad's happening. So just make sure that you keep it positive. And you want to accentuate the positive. So if you're having a challenge in the relationship, you don't want to, you know, be accusing them of something and saying, oh, you're doing this thing wrong or that thing wrong. You kind of want to sandwich it and, God, I really, our sex life has been really great and I love having sex with you. And you know what would be really fun? I think that we could try this, you know? So you just want to make it more positive and open. Um, I think it would be really sexy if, you know, that time you performed oral sex on me, I had a killer orgasm. It'd be fun to try that again. Because guy, and also guys get, they get pretty sensitive, right, Menace? Have you ever gotten feedback about your um, sexual skills? Uh... Not recently, but yeah. I mean, when having the communication, yeah, guys do get kind of, you know. They do. I mean, they can't handle it. I mean, I remember, so there was a guy I was dating a while ago, and his ex girlfriend, like, in, in, a, in a last ditch moment to like spite him at the end of the relationship, said that his penis was smaller than her ex, who had a large, and his penis is big, I'm just telling you. Mm-hmm. He has, like, ever since then, for years, walked around thinking his penis, there's something wrong with it. Because it's one woman. Like, guys can't get over penis criticism. Yeah, So but don't do that. Don't harm there's someone. There's nothing you can do about your penis, so you shouldn't take it to heart. No, but the truth is, is his penis is pretty freaking awesome. And he really, in his mind, thinks he's, like, penis dysmorphia. Penis dysmorphia. Yeah, he thinks it's all messed up. So don't insult your partner. You never want to insult anyone, actually. Uh-huh. These are just constructive communication skills. So... Of course, the first thing that Madison and I are going to run through here, and Madison, feel free to, to chime in, is, of course, threesomes. So threesomes, of course, are like the number one, like I think men since the beginning of time. It's their it's like top the fantasy. It's the holy grail for guys. It is the holy grail. So <clears throat> you got to think about this. If you guys want to have a threesome, um, you know, you might already be having an amazing sex life and Things are great. And you're thinking, and I think a lot of guys are the ones that initiate this. I don't want to be yeah, there's a, stereotypical here. I would here, say but, it would probably be 70, 30. Right. When yeah. it comes to this conversation, 70% guys, right. 30% girls that want to do And they don't know what to do and how do I talk about it. So first, this is how you do it. You got to assess your relationship. And if you guys are not in a good place, emotionally, sexually, whatever, mm-hmm. not a great time to bring it up. It's yeah. just like having a kid to save your relationship. Having a threesome isn't going to save your relationship either. Um, if you've got huge jealousy issues in the relationship, she always thinks you're out banging your coworker. Not a great time. <laughs> no. But if you guys meet the criteria that you have healthy communication, you're having great sex, you talk about things, and it's just something mm. that you want to try, um, you could start the, co- the conversation talking about your fantasies um, and talking about, you know, so let's, we're going to run through this here with, with, with uh, Madison, okay? Madison? So okay. here we go. Okay. Where's my script? Okay. So, um, I'm the guy. All right. She's my girlfriend, Madison. Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie. God, our sex life is is so good. I just feel like it just keeps getting better lately. I mean, the other night was so hot. 
I was wondering, do you have any sexual fantasies that you've been wanting to fulfill or try or some new things to, like, take it to the next level? All right, stop. Hold on. <laughs> this is a guy supposed to be saying this? Yeah. This is right. how a guy should be saying this. All right. That's not how a normal okay. guy would say this, probably. How, would you how say he it? should be saying it? Well, like, this is the context. Yeah. Hey, babe, so any fantasies you've been having lately? Anything you want to try? You know, like, what, what, what's on your bucket list? Like, what do you want to try? Um, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, are there things, like, that you've ever thought about, like, you know, when you're masturbating or you're fantasizing? Is there any, like, things that you've ever think about that you want to try? Um, well, the sex is great that we have, but, uh, sometimes I watch porn that turns me on. Oh, that's hot. What kind of porn do you watch? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't say that's hot, though. What? Because then she's going to think you're pervy. You're trying to be open. Oh, but she knows I already watch yeah, porn yeah, 24-7. I, you know, I know, but, like, you want to oh, fake her out. You and do? Think that oh, yes, I didn't know you watched porn, sweetie. What kind do you watch? Yeah. What kind yeah. do you watch? Um, yeah, well, I, you know, we should watch it together sometime. Turns me on to, uh, you know, see women together sometimes. Oh. What about you? See, this is what I like. You're making it her idea. That's what you got to do. Yeah. That's the thing. You want to make it her. Thank you, Menace. You want to make it her idea. Or you want to. No, because that's, that comes off wrong. I've said that before. And people are like, what do you mean? But you actually, you don't want to force it on her. And you mm. want to kind of just probe, see what her fantasies are. And it's amazing if it is her yeah. idea. So that's the but perfect I, scenario. That's why I'm saying, like, when you say, oh, that's hot, you're going to kind of. Okay, off. I didn't mean that. You got to pretend that you're Thank actually you, open and you're yeah. listening. Oh, to what wow. You have to say, you're right. Good call. You just want to stick That's your a really good call. There, you know? Okay. You got to so, hear her So out. you watch. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, maybe, um, babe, why don't we watch some porn together sometime? We can see what turns us both on. You know, I've, you know, what do you think about that? Would you be into that? Um, yeah, sure. What, um, what did you have in mind? I don't know. I mean, we could just like kind of surf around the web, look at some porn that is interesting to us. You know, I mean, as far as like my fantasies, like I've always thought it'd be kind of, you know, cool to try a threesome. I mean, I'm so satisfied with you and our sex life and I'm not thinking about anyone in particular, but I don't know. I think it's like skydiving. It's just like something I've always wanted to try. Yeah. Like your best friend or something. No. And the thing is, I mean, I'm not thinking of anyone in particular. I mean, I think it's better. You know, I don't want yeah. no one that we know, but it could be cool. I mean, I think it'd be kind of, you know, interesting to see you with another woman. Would that turn you on, you think? Um, maybe. Who are, did you have in mind? I know you've always had the hots for Ashley. Is that what this is no. about? No. See, no, you got flipped I, on you right now. No, Ashley. No, babe. No, <laughs> we don't want to bring in any f- people we know. Yeah. That would just be messy. I mean, I want to find someone together if you're into it, you Forget know? Ashley. She sucks. I hate yeah, her. Yeah, she's not that hot. That boob job looks terrible yeah. on her. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. But, her eyebrows are terrible. <laughs> oh, she needs a cut Exactly. Right there. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, I think, you know, we could just go back. I don't know. Like, my friend, he, you know, my friend Bob goes to these things, and he talks about these parties he goes to, and there's people who are a little more open. We could check that out. Um, we could even just kind of, you know, while we're having sex, we could just kind of talk about it. And it would be kind of hot just to talk about someone else being there and see what happens. Well, it's something I'd be open to exploring. Um, let's think about it more. And what, how would we find someone? What planet is this? See, you're the, I think you're talking too much. About you're you're giving the idea too much. How can we make this conversation? Giving her, make making her bring up the idea of the threesome. How could we? How well, could we, we did. She said she watches porn with women, so that was uh, my entree. So say, oh, so are you like into threesomes or something? Yeah, are you into Maybe? chicks? Um, Have you ever wanted to be with a woman? You guys get yeah, the point. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying. You got to bring it up. She brings it up. Then you're like, oh, okay, we could explore. Another thing you can do here is start watching porn together. The Good Vibrations has this great site, Good Vibes After Dark. It's on my website, sexwithemily.com. And you can like, buy minutes, and they have all this like female-friendly porn. I mean, the porn that you're into, guys, might not be what she's into, but there is stuff that she's into that you'd probably be into as well, mm-hmm. and you guys can find something together. And the other thing is a great way that actually works – because I know I had a guy do this with me a long time ago, but uh-huh. we were together and he, I was like in my early twenties before I had ever ventured into anything really crazy. But uh-huh. he, um, during sex, during intercourse, he was like, Hey, so, cause we had time to talk, watch porn together. He's like, Hey, so right now there's like, I'm picturing like this hot woman, like what, she's here and she's like going down on you. How does that feel? Like he, he role played it in my mind. I was like, yeah, that's really hot. He's like, she's just like going down on you and she's like, you're moaning. And, and he was like talking me through it. And I thought that's, and there was no one in the room that wasn't a threesome yet, but it was leading up to it and it planted the seed. So even if she's 
freaked out about it. Like, that's just a fun, like, dirty talk role play thing to get into and see how it goes from there. Yeah. And I hope you all wish you all threesomes for Christmas. <laughs> okay. So that's okay, how wait, you got to do it. What? All right. So Let's the, sum it up. Yeah. Okay. She's a female. Mm-hmm. She's in a relationship. This, be 100% honest. Your boyfriend comes to you and in this discussion. How would you handle it? Would you ever, if you're not into it, would you ever forget it? Uh, or would you, it always be in the back of your mind? No, it's definitely, because, I mean, it's it's happened, and obviously the threesome hasn't happened, and so it's always in the back of my mind. That that's Wait, how long have you been dating this guy? Um, Wait, talk been, straight in the mic. Oh, sorry, we've been together for, like, two and a half years. Um, Has he brought it up? Yeah. yeah, he's definitely brought it up multiple I times. I mean, every guy does, so yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. He's, like, very sexual, so he's always, you know. How long into the relationship did he ask Maybe like a year and a half. Okay, that's a good. And what'd you say? Um, I said no. (laughs) To be honest, I'm an only child. I'm not great at sharing, (laughs) and like I also have a running fear of vaginas, not my own, but others. So it's like I wouldn't necessarily want to do anything to her, and I wouldn't know how I I don't know how I'd feel about him doing stuff to her. Right, it'd be hard. Jealousy. Yeah. Well, this is what I want to say is my next point. Threesomes are not for everyone, and if she's not into it. You know, if she's not into any, like, she might just shut it down. She might not be into women. She might not be into other vaginas. So you just got to know that it might just be ruled out with whoever you're with. It might never happen. There is no, I'm giving you the best tools here. But if someone's not into something, they're just not into something. Men is, you know, might not be into God knows what. Sex toys or uh, a butt plug. A butt plug. Yeah, not Medis- that. but but some people are. So here's the thing: you're not gonna you, again. You want to you know talk about it in a way that you're bringing the converse the topic up together. But again, if she says no, like if the more you keep begging and asking her, you're not gonna change her mind. So I would just say this is a great way to go about it. And you might not get the threesome, but by sharing your fantasies, you might get something else. Yeah, yeah. don't act thirsty. Yeah. Don't act thirsty, Calm exactly. Because be- there's jealousy. There's so many other issues that can come up. So you want to make sure you're coming from a really strong place. And then if you do decide to have a threesome, you got to set the rules ahead of time before, you know, is there kissing? Is the person sleeping over? Um, you know, yeah. there's other things. I've talked a lot about threesomes on the show, but I just wanted yeah. to give you some scripts. So the next script. Oh, one, one more thing. Yes, honey, go ahead. But again, like if a guy asks you this women don't like take offense to it every guy has to try at least once right. it just brings it up, yeah you don't know? get mad at your guy and it doesn't necessarily mean he wants to bang your friend or whatever mm-hmm. i mean it can just be a really hot thing to do and, I, and it, again nothing in the sexual under the sexual umbrella is for everyone that's what makes the world go round if it's something that you're like i'm gonna die if i don't have a threesome you know i will die if i don't have a threesome before i die you know then you might not be with the right partner if it's really mm-hmm. like your deal breaker or your bucket list because you just got to find, be with the right person. And I just feel like before people commit and get married, they find out afterwards that they're not sexually compatible. Mm-hmm. So these are good things to figure out before you commit to life for someone. Cool. Okay, the next one is anal sex. All right. This is a big topic, a hot topic. It's the it thing to get your partner to do. I think it's funny. When we started, anal was the huge thing, the show, but now I feel like squirting is the new anal. Yeah, it's but so we're just trendy gonna, right now. It is so trendy. Everyone's squirting all over the place. It's a messy world. <laughs> um, so, so it's naughty, a little bit taboo, but when it's done wrong, it can be a real pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. Um, It's an absolute nightmare on the receiving end. So there's a lot of women who I know have had really bad experiences the first time. And, you know, they were drunk. A guy just shoved it in without lube. He didn't ask first. He didn't let her know. And then they swear it off forever. And now you're the guy dating her. And she's like, nope, I'm done. No anal. It hurt. And and they sign it Mm -hmm. off for life. But there are ways to turn the situation around because anal sex can be very pleasurable. For mm-hmm. a lot of women, um, once they do it right. I mean, if you do it wrong, it's painful. If you do it right, which I've talked on the show how to do it right, um, it can be very pleasurable. There's a lot of nerve endings. Women can have orgasms. You use mm-hmm. lube. You're with a trusted partner. But let's um, let's talk about it here. Okay. Um, all right, Madison. So I'm, I'm, I'm the dude. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I noticed um, Okay. Hey, babe. <laughs> So, uh, um, I've noticed that when, uh, so when I touch you, I was thinking about our sex life and I feel like it's just gotten really hot lately and I love having sex with you. And, uh, I noticed like when I try to touch you, like on your back end, you kind of wince and jump away. Like when I kind of touch your, touch your butt, like I can't tell, like, is it just sk- scare you or is it something you're not into or how do you feel about it? Yeah. I had a really bad experience once and it just seems so painful. I don't want to do it. Painful. What happened, babe? 
Um, <laughs> Why are you laughing? Sorry. I had a bad experience once. Like, a guy doesn't want to hear about another guy, like, wanting to stick his... Penis okay, so body, why don't you, you like? Know? Yeah, but you got it. Why, why don't you like it? Is it like something you've seen, or what? Why, like, it just, what happened? It just looks so painful, and I've had friends who have bled. They bled. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. You know, I mean, I, I know women they have bad experiences, but you know, the thing is that if there's ways to do it right, and I and I know that there's a lot of pleasure that can be sought, that can be experienced, and. You know, the trick of it is just, you know, you could go slow and you have to use lots of lube. And I would like to just kind of play with that. Maybe we could just, I could just touch that, touch your area, your butt, your anus a little yeah. slowly with some lube. And like, we could maybe try some toys and just kind of play around with it and see how you feel. Because I think you might really like it. Yeah. Maybe we could start off <laughs> slow and see how that goes with the fingers first. Yeah, it's all, Yeah. It's all about, you know, it's all about going slow and using lots of lube. That douchebag you're with didn't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> um, Emily, your boyfriend is such a prude. I mean, your girlfriend, sorry. I know. I know. I date the right, exactly. I don't date the right types. No, so the point here is, is that, that, that to do anal sex correctly, you have to have lube. Like, there is no, there is, there is no debating the importance of lube. So I just say you do use lube. And also, if it's the first time, maybe she's never had a bad experience. It just terrifies her because she's heard it from her friends. Just start rubbing around her anus. Like, with, so put a little lube on your finger and just start rubbing and see how it feels. And then you can stick your pinky in if you want. Then you can, you know, use a little toy. And then, I mean, I would say this doesn't happen in one day. So you play with the area a little bit. And maybe the next time you're together, you stick a finger in. And then you could try it, you know, slowly with lots of lube. And you might get what you want. But it's important to talk to her about what what the experience was with her, why it didn't feel good. And that you know what you're doing because you've been listening to sex with Emily for so long and I've told you how to have really good anal yeah, sex. You need like a slip and slide. That yeah, much lube. I love the slip and slide. Yeah. <laughs> My I love pure lube. It's spelled P J U R. You can get it at uh, goodvibes.com. They're pretty awesome. Okay. Here's our next conversation. All right. <laughs> this is about this is a touchy subject for men. How to bring a sex toy into our sex life. Right. Okay. And Madison actually wrote a great blog about this on our website, sexomy.com, a few months ago when she first started. Of course, one of the rite of passages is, you know, all the. She was an intern. Now she's producing. But we have intern sex for review day. And mm-hmm. I sent her home with some toys, probably a lot of toys. And you wrote a great blog. If you want to talk about what, what happened there. Oh, yeah. So, um, actually, funny enough, my story kind of took place before I even started working at Sex with Emily. Um, my boyfriend stumbled across my vibrator, which I had kind of kept a secret from him. I just hadn't been ready to talk about it because I was like, ah, if I talk about it, then he's going to want to use it. He's going to expect all these things from me. So I'd hidden it, but um, it had somehow turned itself on in uh, my it drawer. And mm-hmm. he heard this buzzing sound and was kind of like following it all around my room and ended up finding my magic bullet and just kind of was like, what is this? And I was like, okay, hey, either I can lie or I can just tell him the truth. And I did. And it ended up being like the best thing that's ever happened to our sex life because now... We have all these different toys that we play with, and he was so excited about it. He loved it, but I was so scared. I just what were you scared about? What was the scare? Um, I was afraid he would judge you. Yeah, I was kind of afraid that he would judge me, or he would think like, "Oh, like my girlfriend's a like a nymphomaniac." Yeah, like now we can do everything. I was kind of worried that the floodgates would open, but it ended up being like a really good starting point for us, like a talking point. Yeah, exactly. And I was just kind of, I kind of thought he would be freaked out about it. I was worried he would like tell our friends or stuff like that, but he was so cool about it. He was way more excited than I was, I think. Do you think it's because you were able to, like, how is it different when you're using the toy with him Um, during intercourse? It's definitely different because I know how to touch myself with it whereas like I'm not really the best at that like barehanded so he really got off on that idea in itself that I was taking my pleasure into my own hands and that it was kind of like a dual thing because when the guys behind you are doing whatever and you know he's very into what he's doing and sometimes he forgets to pay attention to, to, the, your clitoris. to the clitoris yeah mm, so that it's clitoris kind of, yeah, you know, it's that button that's hard to hit. Guys forget about it a lot of the time, and it's so important in having an orgasm. So it was like my a couple of our first blended orgasms that happened were um, with using, like, the magic bullet on the outside and, like, him having sex with me. And he thought that was great. He was right. all about it. Because he can't do it all. And it's true yeah. that a lot of women need the clitoral orgasm first before they can have a G-spot orgasm or at the same time. So you had your first G-spot clitoral orgasm yeah. using a toy. That's amazing. Okay, so here's our script. Yes. Um, oh, right. Am I the, what, you're the... Oh, you're going to be the girl. I'm the girl. Oh, We planned okay. this out. Okay. Nice. 
Uh, okay, so, hey, sweetie, um, I, uh, I was wondering, I want to show you this really cool new thing I got today. Um, how would you feel about trying something new together? Wait, what is it? Is it a dildo? Mm -hmm. What, am I not good enough for you? Well, what? it's not a deal. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a vibrator. It's a, it's a toy that I think that, you know, no, babe, I love having sex with you. It's amazing. I just think that I think you'd find it really hot too, because I can have like multiple orgasms with it and I can use it when we're actually having sex. And I can you, use it on my clitoris. You don't have to do as much work. <laughs> and it takes away half the work. You know how sometimes you have to perform oral sex on me for like 40 minutes and, and, until I can have an orgasm? And I know you hate that. And I know that you hate going down on me. So um, this actually in like five minutes, it, and then we can have sex or, or, or sometimes if you put your penis in me, I can leave it on my clitoris and it'll feel really good. And I don't know. I think you might like the vibrations as well. Might feel over, good for you. If it'd be over quicker. Yeah, sure. Let's try it <laughs> yeah, out. <laughs> let's do it. You never go down on me anymore. Um, no. And I think it's just like that. Like you guys say, like, this is really fun for us. And then there's also like the penis. Right? Have you used a cock ring with your um, partner? Yeah, I have. I'm not a huge fan of the cock ring. It just kind of like flies all over and it's a little bit distracting. You haven't tried the Mio yet though. No, I haven't. See, so you Mio. use like the old, oh, the ones that are disposable. I, yeah. I, or I used a double-sided one that kind of like poked me. It was supposed to, one was supposed to sit on top, like one vibrator on top and one below. And so mm -hmm. it was like hitting me in the a lot of them weird. move around, yeah. And it was just yeah. like, I wasn't ready for that kind of. It was like, oh, God. Well, cool. the thing about the vibrating rings that are good, like the Mio, is that you you put on your penis, it's one size fits all, and then it has a, a vibrator, so it feels good on him, but he can feel the vibrations as well. I'm telling you, Menace, if you never had vibrations on your shaft of your penis or your balls, <laughs> I've never had a guy say to me, that feels bad. <laughs> all right. I'm just saying, it's for couples. So I think you just got to, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off these conversations. You just have to, you know, sit down and just be like, this is what I want to try. Because if you're sitting there on a sex life right now that is feeling sort of stagnant and you want to take it to the next level, you could put it on your New Year's resolution list that I'm just going to have this conversation because once the sex dies and you stop having sex, you're roommates. How's that going for you? Yeah. <laughs> I told you uh, probably a couple podcasts ago that I have a friend that, that's married that sleeps in separate rooms and that's just how it is that's the you know you're just a roommate right that's all because people don't realize that sex takes work our sex mm -hmm. life should constantly be expanding and growing and of course you had great sex the first six months to two years of your relationship but after that it, it might die you know just things like everything in life if you were having you know spaghetti every night for dinner for two years you'd be like eh, i really don't want any more fucking noodles so so that's why it's something that you 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 know you want to continue and i'm not saying you gotta have anal you gotta have a threesome but it could just be you know having sex in your living room instead of your bedroom whatever it is that will make your sex life different and expansive and changing so you guys continue to connect because you do not want your sex life to fall by the wayside because once that happens and you're in best separate bedrooms it's really hard to get it back. That lust. Yeah. So that's what I'm here, all about here. All Helping about people. that lust. Okay. Well, that's my script. Hope that was helpful. If you have any more ideas or things you'd like us to role play here, I think we can. Madison, you rock. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. She's that's... been awesome. Menace, thank you for your um, everything, for being you. The at the end of the day, you know. at the end of the day, the whole thing that you just did was about communication and not being afraid to talk to each other. Exactly. You're not going to die. Communication is a lubrication. And you know what? If you're with someone that you feel like you can't talk to, this is going to be a problem in other areas of your oh, relationship. Yeah. Do you want to so, be like that for the rest of your life? Exactly. No. Really? Like this is the person you want to live with. You can't talk to them. So I'm trying to help you here. Saving the world one orgasm at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Menace. You can find Menace everywhere. Yeah. At Menace and then your show. Oh, the Woody Show. It's on uh, Alt 98.7 in Los Angeles, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can stream it on the iHeartRadio app or just search... The Woody Show. And it's Perfect. a daily show. You can listen to pop culture And stuff. he's on billboards, too, if you... Yeah, all over billboards. LA. And Madison, your Twitter? Uh, yeah, the real Madisha. It's kind of embarrassing. Is that what it is? Madisha? Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. It was my gangster alter ego when I was like, like, okay. a so. Awesome. And check out her great blogs on my website, <laughs> Sex with Emily. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Okay, everyone, thanks for listening to the show and uh, talk about awkward conversations. Have you ever been with a partner that maybe just gets there a little bit too quickly? One in three men suffers from premature ejaculation, but you don't have to now because Permescent is a quickly absorbing delay spray that allows you to have the sex you want. 
you don't have to think about baseball or your great aunt Margaret with the furry mustache. You can actually focus on your partner's hot body, especially now that you have the time to make your partner orgasm. And the thing about permescent is it closes the arousal gap between men and women. Men take six to eight minutes to orgasm. Women take sometimes 30 minutes. So this will double the amount of time that you can last in the bedroom. So it's not just premature ejaculation. It's just if you want to last longer. Uh, Promescent helps you last twice as long. It's the only FDA-approved treatment for premature ejaculation. Go to promescent.com to find more. That's promescent, P-R-O-M-E-S-C-E-N-T.com. Thanks for listening. Hey, I'm Jake. And I'm Amir. And we're from that appropriately named web series, Jake and Amir. We're also the voices of If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet, hosted by us. That's right. Every week we offer our personal insight to real problems submitted to us by real people, and sometimes even our comedy friends join, like Ben Schwartz, Thomas Middleditch, and Allison Williams. The important thing is, the advice is often pretty bad. But hopefully always funny. So, go to podcastone.com and hit that download button to hear our terrible but hopefully funny advice. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.